Hello, I'm Bernhard Krugs from Munich, Germany, and I'm the author and creator of the WordPress plugin JSON Content Importer. And in this short video, I show you how to use it together with the Wikipedia API. So enjoy. This video will show you how to use the Wikipedia API on your WordPress website together with the JSON Content Importer plugin. The free version is enough here for just displaying content from Wikipedia. This example is also on api.jsoncontentimporter.com at api uh, slash Wikipedia. So let's go. So Wikipedia is offering its content via an API which is described at mediawiki.org. At mediawiki.org we find several information how this works. The basic principle is to get access with an endpoint. The endpoint is en.wikipedia.org and uh, api.php. And with this get request and several get parameters, we can select what content should be in the JSON we get from the Wikipedia API. In an example, we use at api.jsoncontentimporter.com. Uh, we have um, in parameter titles Pope Francis and Wikipedia is answering with some basic information on the Pope. So we get some JSON data from the API and we now have to check what this uh, JSON is and how to uh, create a template for the plugin. Um, if your browser is displaying uh, JSON in this way, you can see the structure of the JSON. If you get something like that, so this is the raw JSON, you can uh, copy paste it and copy paste this JSON in a website like jsoneditoronline.org where this JSON is inserted and the structure of the JSON is also displayed. So here you see what this machine readable JSON is in a structure you can read and parse and check what data is where. So if you have the free version of the JSON Content Importer WordPress plugin and um, want to display some data, you have to do this. Let's have a closer look on the JSON we got from Wikipedia. In the browser, we see a batch complete and a query, a page, and the first item of the pages is a page ID and the real information we got from Wikipedia. JSON is structured in uh, curly brackets and square brackets and Square brackets are so-called arrays and curly brackets structure objects. So this is a thing you need to know for the free version. For the pro version, while using uh, the Twig parser, this is uh, less important. So here we use the free version. So we had to have to check, is it an object or an array? Unfortunately, this display of uh, the JSON in the browser does not show you array or object. Websites like JSON Editor Org um, are better. So here you see object, object batch complete would be part of an object and the next item of the object is query. And inside the query is an array called pages containing one item starting with zero with the real data. So we have an object, object, and uh, an array. So this is important for creating the template for the plugin. Now I show you how to use the Wikipedia data on your WordPress website. We are now here at video.jsoncontentimporter.com with a new page. Uh, in, on this new page we insert the JSON Content Importer um, shortcode. The URL is the URL we have from Wikipedia with the JSON. Just copy paste it here and 
with this URL, we want to show some data. Debug mode is 10, will show us some debug information if the retrieval of the chase is successful and so on. And for the begin, we just insert test in the text between the shortcode JSON content importer. So that's the first step. Let's have a look at the preview of this page. The page shows us, okay, we are here at um, WordPress video json content importer.com we get with this url this json so this json here and in the end we get tests so we now know the retrieval of the page of the json is successful Now we know that the JSON from Wikipedia is available for the short code and the plugin, and with that we can remove the debug is 10 to remove the debug messages, and now we have to replace test by a template. We have to set up a template in the JSON content importer plugin short code. And in this case, the template looks like this. We have an object called query, and inside the query object is an array called pages. So you have to check here if it's have to use array or not in the subloop structure. At array, you have to use uh, dash array, and objects you have uh, just using subloop. The minus one says that the plugin should loop through all items of the object or the array. If you replace that by another integer, you can reduce the amount of data which is displayed. And inside the array pages is an information title, and by query.pages.title, this information is displayed. So this is in the center of these two loops and in the preview mode this shows us pope francis which is here the title and if we add extract extract we also get more information so this is the way the free version of the JSON Content Importer WordPress plugin is parsing the JSON and displaying the data. So there's another way to do this by using base node. At base node is query inside the shortcode as a shortcode parameter, and then you do not need the subloop with the query and not the query dots at the template and if you do a preview on that you get the same thing so this is the reason for the base node uh, to go inside a JSON at the uh, right starting place so if the base node is defined the plugin looks into the JSON and goes to the place where this base node here the query is and starts from that place on. With the pro version of the JSON Content Importer plugin, you can do it in a slightly different way. The pro version is with the pro uh, JSON Content Importer Pro shortcode, so we have to add Pro at the end. And in this case, we uh, do not need the base node, but we need parser is tweak, as this parser will evaluate the JSON. And in this case, we do not need uh, the subloop. Um, we directly have access to the data. The 
syntax is a little bit different to the free version parser. It's a, a double curly break. So in this case, we can try that. As you see, there is an error. This error is caused by um, using an array here. So we have to specify what kind or what, what item of the array should be used. And here we need query dot pages. So the first error. And now we have a preview and see the data as we've seen it in the free version. So the syntax of the pro version is much more simple and the twig parser allows to have that, that structures like if then else and something like that.